canned peaches are a necessity around our house. I think so. Because, frankly, the kids won't eat store-bought peaches. Right. When I run out and I get store-bought peaches for some reason or maybe someone, you know, like my sister likes to bring us extra groceries when she comes over, which is super awesome. Except when I open those canned peaches, my kids turn their nose up to them. Yeah. Heck, so does my husband. Right. Yeah. And they say, Mom, it's just not your canned peaches. Yeah. They That's just don't like them. I know. When all seven of my kids were living at home, we would actually buy 10 boxes of peaches and make all of them into just canned peaches. And we'd have them eaten by the next year round. Yeah. So it's definitely a necessity. I think it's a staple. And it's one of the things that kids of all ages will generally eat pretty easily. Mm -hmm. When the kids were a baby, I didn't have trouble yeah. with them eating them. Toddlers, they loved them. Teenagers, they still love them. Their taste buds haven't changed beyond them. And these are pretty easy to do. In fact, when my son was 16 years old, I had uh, just had a baby and had some issues, and he actually canned up all the peaches for me. Excellent. I know. So let's show you how easy it is. two jars simultaneously the same recipe but we're going to prep our peaches differently because Marie's family likes her peaches one way and my family likes them another so why don't you tell them how you like yours and why oh so we like ours just cut in half and placed in the jar I think they're really pretty that way they do take up a little bit more space but when I tell my kids kids okay you need to get your fruit if it was cut into small slices they would just pick one slice of peach, <laughs> whereas this way they get a half of the peach. And if you think about it, the surface area is a lot less if it's not cut up, and it starts to age at those surfaces. So mm -hmm. that's the other reason. Whereas my family loves our slice in the chunks, because what we like to do is we grab the whole jar and a fork, and we just eat it right out of the jar. Right. And if it was a whole chunk, we'd have drips all over our laps. I'd be trying to eat around this <laughs> thing. Whereas they come out so nicely on a, on a fork in just a chunk. So we're just going to show you how to do a fork place. Yep. Yeah. So let's begin by each of us pulling out a jar out of the oven. So we have our jars in the oven at 250 degrees and we need to grab out two quarts, one for each of us. Okay. Now you have to have these really hot so that they don't end up breaking when you put them in the canner, but you're going to be putting in cold peaches. So because of that, I like to put in a little bit of boiling water just in the bottom to encourage that bottom to stay nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Then what we need to do is we need to grab some peaches. So yeah. I'm actually going to move these. I was these. just going to say, yeah, we're going to have to have those on the sides mm -hmm. here. And so let's just grab a couple each. Generally speaking, you're going to look at anywhere from two to four peaches per quart jar. Now, for me, cutting them up, you actually end up using a little bit more. You do. You get more in a jar. So we'll just grab a few here. And if you're going to do them in halves like I am, then you need to slide them in so that the cut side is down, which can be a little tricky sometimes. So what I do is I have cut it in half and then I just set it down here and I just slice it into chunks. And then scoop it up and drop them in. Now remember, your jar is pretty hot at this point, so a little difficult to work around. You may want a jar funnel. We have one there, but neither one of us is reaching for it. Now if you have smaller, smaller peaches, you want to go kind of back and forth. For me, this is two large peaches. It kind of fills this perfectly. I'm going to do this other half here. And I may not even need it all, but I'm going to take a few chunks of it and see what I can get in here. Yeah. That looks good for me. Perfect. 
So the next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to let Emmeline wash her hands because yeah. I know that's kind of hard being sticky. So the next step is to add some lemon juice. And the reason for this is to keep the color really good. You don't want them to start to turn brown. It's one teaspoon per peach. I've got two peaches in there. So I'm gonna get two teaspoons. I have two and a half peaches in mine. Mine is one slice, but I'm gonna be okay with that. So I'm putting two and a half <coughs> teaspoons in. to go in. Hold on, I don't want to just put it back in my container. Pour it out a little faster, then I could stop it. There we go. And then on top of the peaches, we're going to pour half a cup of sugar. Now for mine, it's going to it's going to pool right there in the middle. It's not going to just flow. Hold it up. Yep, it's not going to flow quite as freely as Marie's did. And so when I put my water in, I'm going to need to add the water more slowly, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to need to get air bubbles out. Now that we have all of our sugar and our lemon juice in, we will pour the hot water right over the top. And especially for mine, it just dissolves it all and goes right down. You check for air bubbles. When you do it like this, you don't tend to get too many. And you want to leave about an inch of headspace. Okay. Here's this if you want to check. For me, it will be much more important to check for air bubbles. Yeah, there was still a little one there. Okay, I just pause for a second, let some of these air bubbles come up. Then I'm going to run mine down because I have lots, lots of little air bubbles. With all of the chunks like that, mm -hmm. it's just much more likely to happen. And you may have to add more water after. Yep. We're looking yeah, pretty good. good. I'm going to add just a tad more water. Make sure in the case of ours here that the peaches are kind of pressed down. I'm just going to add a little bit more there. Okay. If you can, you want to get your fruit below the level of the water. Right, which for the chunked mm -hmm. ones, it's a little more difficult. In fact, I should probably pull one out. Even with these. But as it cooks, it should be okay. Yeah, it's going to be fine yeah. as it cooks. You, I could possibly pull one out, but I'm not going to. <laughs> There's plenty of room there, and it's not going. At, as we process these through our, our boiling water bath, that's going to cook down, and those are going to drop. So now we're going to do our lids. Perfect. We're just going to put these on fingertip tight. Look how pretty those are. I know. Each one, you know, the same, but yet different. Yeah. You know, just by how you cut your peaches, it creates a whole new look for your peaches. Right. They definitely have their own attributes. Yeah. Just drop them in here. Okay. And you'll want the water to go over the top by anywhere from one to two inches. We've got a few more things that we need to add in there before we process it. Mm -hmm. And then it'll get it to that point. We're going to process it for 30 minutes if we're at sea level. Since we're at 1,200 feet, we're going to go th for 35. If you're unsure how altitude affects your canning processing time, go ahead and check out our Canning Basics videos. We also have a video on a, a tutorial or a refresher on how to use the water bath canner on that same play playlist. It'll be right up here in a hot box. <laughs> our canned peaches are all done processing. And you're ready to come out. Okay, so this one is Emmeline. Yeah, look how pretty that with is. With her peach chunks. It's so perfect. I'm going to turn it so you guys can see it here like that. Ooh. Okay. Oh, and Marie's whole this peaches. This one is mine. Make you want me to turn it so yeah. the ball's in the front? Yes, I'm obsessive like that, guys. But <laughs> I even line up my jars on the counter like that. Okay. I don't have to be quite so quirky, but I am. That's but you okay. know that by now. We don't mind. Okay. I love them. I do too. I mean, look at that. We got two 
perfectly great Perfect. ways to preserve your peaches. Let us know which one you which way you do it. Do you slice your peaches? Do you put your peaches in in halves, or do you do something else? Oh, the other thing I'm curious them? about. Well, so I know that my grandma and my mom used to always throw a pit in with these. They weren't exactly sure why. That'd be interesting. So, yeah. My grandma didn't do that. Really? Mm -mm. Oh, I was talking to a woman in the store the other day, and she was saying she did it too, and didn't know why. Huh. So if any why? of you know why, historically, people have thrown pits in with their peaches, I would love to know the reasoning. Yeah, me too, because I actually haven't seen that done. Sure. Uh, neither of my grandmas did that that okay. I can remember. Hmm. Interesting. And let us know how you can yours. In the meantime, make sure you click that subscribe button so that the next time we post another video, you can be notified.